Hi, I'm Don, your App Bazinga trainer. Let's take a look at installing the Java Developers Kit and the Android Developers Kit. In our previous session, we downloaded and saved the Java Developers Kit. Now we want to install it. Click on it, click on Next, click on Next again, and the installation will start. The Java Development Kit install is pretty much automatic and will run for the most part by itself. However, it does take several minutes and there are several points in which it asks you to click on a next button in order for it to continue. It is important that you pay attention and watch the messages so that you're sure that everything is proceeding as you want it to. After the developer tools are installed, the runtime tools are installed in order for us to be able to test the apps that we develop. Be sure that you get the message that says the development kit has been successfully installed. If it hasn't, you'll have problems later on. Click the close button and proceed to the next step. While it isn't necessary to register in order to use the Java development kit, I suggest that you do register and create your own account. Now that we have Java installed, let's go get the Android developer bundle and install that. Be sure you install the ADT to a permanent location. If you try to move it after it's been unzipped and installed, it will probably require changing a number of settings. It's easier to locate it in a permanent location in the first place. Eclipse came as part of the ADT bundle, so let's navigate to that location, find Eclipse, which is in a subfolder, and there it is. You will want to put a link to Eclipse on your desktop, but for the moment we're going to run it from right here. It takes a few moments for the Android developer tools to start up and run. First thing it does is ask you for a workspace, and I usually just accept the default that it's already selected. If you see a splash screen like this and don't want to read it any further, just click on the little X up here and it'll go right away. The first time you run Eclipse, you will want to go over to the Android Software Developer Kit Manager and select the various types of devices that you want to develop for. As you can see, there are a lot of different Android versions of the Android operating system available to choose from. You'll want to pick most of the first two choices, and if you have an Android device, determine what version it is and select that for your install. That way you will be able to test on your own device. Click the Accept button, click the Install button, and it will start the download and the installation process. This can take quite a while depending upon how many different items you've selected. As a general rule, I don't select and install everything in one pass. You can if you want, but I like to see that each part has been successfully installed before I go on to the next part. Once you're completely done with your choices, you should be seeing a screen that looks a bit like this. I chose two different Android levels because I have both of them on my Android device and I've also checked and I have all of the extras installed so everything looks good and we'll go on to the next step of showing that it actually works. I created a little app named DMC40 in a previous video. Now let's see if the Android Virtual Device Manager will open the device that allows us to look at and view that little app that I created. I've created a couple of settings already in this that I'll get into in a different video. So let's just launch the Android simulator right now. This will prove that our install of Java and Eclipse has been successful and that we have a device that will work. For whatever reason, on my PC it takes a good 45 seconds for the Android virtual device to open up. Now that it's open, we'll click on the menu. And here's our little DMC40. Let's click on that. And there it is. Success.